Oh. 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 Yeah, brother. Your wife is coming up. <laughs> In that, we have a panel, and that panel is going to be, uh, instead of the three wise men, we have the three, the wisdom keepers. We have the women. We have Miss Megan Crawford. Dun, 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 dun. Miss Irene, come on. And where's Miss Hart? Miss Hart, you coming? You got to come. I know you're buying stuff. You're doing all the goodies. I'll get you a chair. Don't worry about it. I'll get you a chair. A, we, got, we have brothers to get you chairs. Check, check. Okay. Here you go. One, two. Thank you. Well, guys, so what's awesome is that we have innovations women sitting here in front of you. And that's women and innovations that actually make decisions and make stuff happen. So not just... You know, the, the, the strategic, the women that understand the strategy, uh, women that understand the way business works, women that understand, um, you know, the structure and everything that comes with that. So it's such an honor to be here with Megan Space and you, Crystal. I mean, you you were, you started as a coder child, which is amazing, right? Because, and I think that, and, and the, what you've been building and sense chat and what you're working on right now is unbelievable. I think it's just so important. And it's beautiful that women are now are ones that taking steps. And so, and humbly I'm here too, so it's just an honor. But um, I don't know, uh, Crystal, will you talk about sense real quick about what, what What's the new in the works? I know that you're working on your foundation, but as a technologist, I do want to understand what the future of, of social media is and how do you see it from the perspective of implying a um, single source of truth technology to democratize a lot of things. Sure, hi, I'm Crystal Rose Pierce and um, very happy to be here on 4th of July celebrating our independence and uh, and you know personal sovereignty that's a topic that's really important um, so this is the future of innovation talk and uh, one of the 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 most interesting things I think that we can think about when we're talking about technology is what it's doing to liberate all of us um, we have this amazing incredible opportunity for every single person to find their own Inter, inter, internal value, um, which is right now being uh, externally expressed. And we're doing that through social media primarily. Uh, this is how we connect. We're using our digital devices. Everyone is connecting. And we're creating something extremely valuable. Our data is actually one of the most incredibly valuable things that is happening today. So when we talk about ownership, we talk about sovereignty, um, the, the reason that, and you're mentioning SenseChat, the reason that I started building the product that I'm building or the company, we're now a lab. Uh, we build multiple products using blockchain technology is because we want people to understand that we're, we're coming into an era where we have an individual choice. Um, technology more than ever has connected us in such a way where information travels faster than a virus. It's, it is, it can be a virus. Information uh, is, is, you know, lethal sometimes, but we have this opportunity to, uh, innovate every single sector, every single thing that we do. So blockchain to me is the, the number one technology that's going to radically transform everything. The second is, is AI. If you put the two things together, you have autonomy and you have blockchain. If anybody is kind of wondering, the word blockchain keeps coming up a lot. And that word is going to be as ubiquitous as the word internet soon. Um, but still today, I think a lot of people are wondering what is blockchain? So maybe that's a good start as well. If we're talking about the future of innovation, why is this thing that we think of that is generally related to cryptocurrency um, innovating everything? Why, why is that happening? And I've taken it into my personal mission to help people understand their, their free will uh, through social media. It's a, it's a big ambition, but we're, we're just building a messaging platform. It's a, you know, to break it down into a simple term. Um, but 
this can touch everything from education to healthcare to government. We talk about voting. So I think it's a good idea to talk about the, the basics. Like, how can everybody innovate? How can everybody be a part of this revolution or evolution, you know, through technology? And, and maybe that's a good, a good conversation to have. Yeah, I think, Absolutely. Megan, uh, you come from space, and you've been part of a f new space world f since it's basically in Like, uh, as it started tw almost 12 years ago, you were in the front line being the businesswoman, seeing every single space company. How, how what Crystal is talking about now is actually getting implemented in the space industry because there's so much opportunities and so much innovation that comes from space, but how is space also integrating some of these innovations? Absolutely. So, um, you know, and you said I come from space, and I want to say that both li <laughs> literally and figuratively, right? <laughs> we are all made of stardust, okay? <laughs> that's, that's important to remember. We are all children of the stars. Um, but um, but yeah, I, I've I've been um, kind of watching the space industry develop with a very close eye and, and participating in it in a number of ways over the last decade plus. And you know what what's really interesting to me is how much people don't even realize that the data that you use um, comes from space, right? Your cell phone that isn't working right now. Um, there's a satellite dish though right there pulling data down from space, right? So if you want to connect today, you've got to connect to that. Um, the the images that you see on your Google Maps, those come from space. The GPS itself comes from space. Um, almost all of the data and information that we have about climate change comes from space, right? And, and then, you know, the greatest thing that I'm seeing right now is terrestrial innovations that are now making their way into space. So it used to be that a satellite was the size of a school bus and cost a billion dollars. Today, people are launching satellites the size of a loaf of bread that cost a couple of hundred thousand dollars to build. And that's on the back of Moore's Law and, and the constantly reducing size and, and power requirements of compute, and the increasing efficiency of solar panels. All of these innovations that are going on terrestrially that, that affect your daily life here on Earth um, are making, making space easier, cheaper, uh, cheaper and more accessible every day. Um, and, and going back to, to the blockchain topic, um, you know, I mentioned when I spoke a few minutes ago that now is the time where we get to choose what systems and processes and governance methodologies we take with us into the frontier. And I can think of no better way to, to build a space economy than on an immutable, transparent blockchain backbone. Um, and so that's one of the things that we're really interested in at Space Fund and, and where our, our labs are, are working on some interesting projects as well. And so um, I think uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of room for some beautiful collaboration there. Absolutely. Yes, please. <laughs> I'll just say in space settlement layer, that's all for now. And then we can <laughs> I can say more. But yeah, so, so, much, so much exciting things that are happening. I think that to me, when I think about blockchain and innovation, I think single source of truth. And it just summarizes everything for me because it's just such an unbelievable gift for us to be able to leave through having ability to truly have immutable information and uh, it's very powerful you know even even Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics um, last year we actually discovered that several sounds that we thought were anciently pronounced correctly are not thanks to AI aren't those called emojis <laughs> emojis <laughs> <laughs> right 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 <laughs> yeah yeah so but that's another example of how we're evolving our communication right so the the ancient communications were through pictures they were through emotions we have to get back in touch with our emotional selves and that's something that uh you know social media again it actually is helping us do that the if you emote on a post you know thumbs up thumbs down heart whatever why do they have so many choices now you're giving your emotional vibration to that platform and the AI is actually able to, to dictate and determine how your mood is and what, to, what content they should deliver to you. So we're all a part of a giant experiment right now. Advertising uh, is one of the largest industries in the world and it is actually what powers most of AI. Most AI innovation is based on targeting you for some either purchase or motivation from a platform. But we have the right to, to choose what we do, just like we have the right to vote. And this is something that I think is really important for everyone to understand.
and we're back. back. Yeah, see, the, <laughs> that was Facebook saying they don't want us to look <laughs> <laughs> Sent the signal, turned them off. <laughs> Nobody tell Google what's happening right now, but we're streaming on their platforms, and this is the thing. They, we are all globally connected thanks to these platforms, but there, there has to be an awareness of our choices, and this is the same as, the, same as government. If the, if the largest social networks on the planet can censor our president, how much power are we ascribing to these technology companies? And that's something that, you know, as we talk about innovation, we're also talking about a power shift and a power movement that we are participants in. It's our choice. Just leaving the platform is, is one way to go about doing it, but you're kind of ignoring the problem. It's just like not voting. You know, you still really want to connect. And it's, I don't love Twitter for the, the fact that every time I go on, I just go into a vortex that yeah. gets very dark uh, very quickly. Um, but there are, there are benevolent platforms where we're seeing these things rise and we're seeing them, them come up. Um, I think it's a, a really amazing experiment that's happening, but we are all actually part of this progress. We're all individual data walking around and, and participating. You know, for me, one of the things that's really interesting about AI, I've seen a across a number of industries, but specifically in, in my industry, in the space industry, um, that AI has helped us reach beyond what humanity is capable of on its own. And so I'm thinking specifically about one of my portfolio companies that's built an AI machine learning software platform to help manage constellations of satellites. So right now, there's about 3,000 satellites on orbit. We expect 100,000 satellites to launch in the next decade or less. There is no way that current humans and current computer systems can manage 100,000 satellites swooping around our planet at hundreds of thousands of miles per hour. The only potential solution for that is an AI machine learning driven platform. Um, and so these are, you know, these are the tools that are helping us reach beyond what we're capable of on our own. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, what's interesting too is we're shooting those satellites. What we also should think about is how do we actually repair um, things that break in space? Because uh, right now, just so you all know, we are in war, okay, and we are in a space war with China, and China does attack us regularly by suicide diving their satellites into junk okay and then you know it's it's not much sophisticated war but it can become very very sophisticated so i want to kind of shift our attention a little bit here too on what on what can we do to to make sure that the we use innovations properly that we use innovations in a way to solve problems and then also understand that implementation of a lot of this technologies, might that be quantum, might that be AI, blockchain, it's important that we do it responsibly because it will be implemented. And if it's implemented by tyranny, it will be very painful. And so we are, we are in a rush and the reality is we must implement it now. And so my encouragement is to look at different innovations, look at truly American companies that you see that are that are out there look at space go to spacefund.com and see how many space companies are there you will be surprised to understand to learn that there are so many solutions that are being built right now and they all are hiring the same with ai and uh, the same in blockchain industry all this quantum is exploding biotech is exploding but we must take proactive steps each of us and make sure we invest money we invest attention and we invest our time to be certain that it's properly built. And you make the votes, just like Crystal said, you know, even in social media, look at positive things. Spark your, uh, control the AI, because it's it's just showing you what you're looking at. You, can, you, can, you can control it. I can, my Facebook, do you, do you want a my trick? Facebook is magical wonder. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I live in a completely different world that people re respond to because it, it's it's just a, you can control it. You, you want know? a trick, a little yes. Uh, yes. A tip, yes. a tip yes. on how to get unicorns and rainbows? Um, never, ever, ever use a negative emoji. Bottom line. And by the way, this applies to life as well. If you want to hack life, just stay in a positive frequency and it works it they want your negativity because they use your fear against you and they market to you in your darkest time 
It's a complete manipulation tactic that has been gone, going on for you know, thousands of years as far as we have had any kind of sophisticated communications. And this is just applying. So just do not emote negatively and watch it's going to change your entire communication with everybody, even in the emojis in your keyboard. Look at what is your most recent emoji. And if you are embarrassed to post a screenshot of your most recently used ones, it means you're using the wrong hieroglyphics. <laughs> Use the ones that are positive and it actually will change what that engine is displaying to you because they are looking for when is your purchasing power? Is it at the moment that you're stressed out? Is it at the moment where they're delivering hate and speech that you shouldn't be looking at because it's something that's charging you negatively emotionally and then you go and, and have a, a you know retail therapy we don't want to be manipulated by the engines and it, you can actually hack it. You just have to ignore it. And the more you ignore it, the more it actually goes away. There is a really basic yeah. trick to yeah. this. Exactly. And, and you can also guys just delete what you don't like, delete it. Okay. Because delete it and hide it. You don't have to delete the person. It will stop it. The algorithm is not evil. It just feeds you what you are looking and what you're spend, spending your attention. Your attention is currency. The new currency of our reality is going to be attention. How do we get your attention? How do these companies, corporations, the innovations, whatever you're doing, where you're spending your most valuable asset, which is an attention. And so be conscious about your attention and vote for things that matter in social media, within your words. Say positive fucking things. Excuse my language again. Okay? Like, if you have Censor nothing good to Cancel say, culture. just shut up and say nothing. You know? Be well, quiet. By the way, thank you, everyone, for your attention. This has been really yeah. amazing to have people who are super engaged and to be a collective group who have gone off the grid, chosen not to have any cell phone service. I haven't seen anybody texting. And thank you for being with us and listening and, and being a part of this. It's actually a collective consciousness that we all need. So thanks Great. to the audience. Agreed. Um, and just, uh, I wanted to say quickly, I have this conversation with my daughter all the time about Twitter. She's like, Mom, you, what do you mean you didn't see this on Twitter? Well, Mom, everybody on Twitter is talking about whatever crisis, right? And I said, because the only, I follow 1,200 people on Twitter. They're all space companies or space personalities. Period. Full stop. I get on Twitter to learn about what's going on in the space industry, and that's it. And I have created that Twitterverse for myself, and I don't hear any of the political crap, I don't hear any of the, the you know, current events and the scare tactics and all of that, because I'm on Twitter to socialize with the people I want to socialize with. So manage your feed. It makes a huge difference to the quality of, of social media and your quality of life. Yeah, let's take some responsibility. If you want to unfollow someone, unfollow <laughs> them. I actually don't agree with uh, the platforms being able to completely censor out and delete people from from their world, you know, from their platform. It They're not decentralized, though, so this is an era in which we could benefit greatly from decentralized technology. One of the things that we're going to find, I think the number one innovation, the number one innovation that we're going to have is truth yep. if we can just have truth in each thing that we do and that's where the immutable ledger comes in uh, we will find that everything radically transforms we're going to eliminate middlemen we're going to eliminate fees that are unnecessary we're going to be bringing the things directly to people that need them in a way that's not manipulative or you know profit bearing that is unfairly weighted uh, we're seeing this with everything. Even lending is happening now, and most of it primarily because of cryptocurrency. I'm in the cryptoverse. <laughs> Don't go to crypto Twitter. It's awful. <laughs> but it's but it is something where if you know if you can give a dollar directly to someone with no middleman, and you can do it on a, a digital platform that doesn't charge you a fee, that's such a radically different way of behaving. And we're going to create global currency this way. We're going to create financial inclusion this way. Innovation to me equals inclusion equals equality. This is where we see that in innovation is actually doing more for us. It's not how much more money can we spend on some other fancy tech gadget, even though I like tech gadgets. I think it's really important that the, the real technology is going to be lifting everybody up to equality. And going back to my comments uh, a few minutes ago, I would encourage you to think bigger. It's not a global currency. Right. It's ah. because in space, solar system. Right, right. Universal. Universal yeah. currency. So in space there settlement layer, it's a, it, that the in space economy is very important in order for us to be able to integrate the innovations and service providers that we have right now. So it, it, it goes beyond. It really does. So uh, um, yeah, think bigger. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, on that, I would vote for you for president of the universe. Thank you, thank you. We're referring to that position as empress, and it may not be an election. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, Irena. Thanks for thank leading you. our panel. My pleasure. Thank you. See you in space? Yes, absolutely. Uh, some girlfriends of mine and I are throwing a, a party on the moon.